Hello everyone, praise be to God on this glorious day today, and welcome back to Spy Fox 2, Some Assembly Required, the Flytrap Path. So, we actually might finish it up this episode. We are in the belly of the dogbot now, and there's nuclear waste all over the place. This is a mess. <laughs> LaRoche needs to hire a maid to keep this stuff clean. Oh, rocket boots. Very classy. Hey, look, fly traps. <laughs> Those fly traps are a lot like the one I got from the platform. Yes, indeed. I can't see anything. I need some way to shield my eyes. Yeah, that would probably be good. Don't look directly into the sun. That's what we learned in Pajama Sam 2. <laughs> Is that Perry the Platypus? It looked kind of like Perry the Platypus. <laughs> Pushing this button feeds the fly traps. Those fly traps open up so wide I can see their tonsils. Yeah. Do fly traps even have tonsils? <laughs> hey man, how's your day going? I'm not going to let him know that I'm here. I wonder if I can get that welder to stay at the conveyor belt longer so I can get uh. those goggles. Oh, Spy Fox. What can I do to get those goggles? Hmm. That welder turns his back on the goggles every time something comes down uh. the conveyor belt. I wonder if I can get him to stay at the conveyor belt longer so I can get those goggles. Hmm, good question. <laughs> Why did they make a deflating balloon sound effect? That was strange. Anyhow. <laughs> nice somersault, Spy Fox. You're amazing. He's actually pretty stealthy, uh, which is good because he's a spy. Are those two eyeballs? Those look like two giant eyeballs. And they're following my mouse cursor around. That's kind of creepy, actually. I can't go over there while the guard is watching. I can go now, though. Hmm, that makes the conveyor belt go faster. Indeed, it does. I wonder what that would have done in the other room. Uh, 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 uh. I have the goggles. Booyah. Hopefully he doesn't need those. He's a welder. He probably needs those. Too bad. That's what you get for working for the bad guy. Unfortunately, the goggles ain't gonna protect us from the sunlight. And that's a pretty sly entrance, or should I say, a pretty spy entrance. That must be where the off switch goes for the evil dog bot. When I find a way to get in that room, I'll still need to find the off switch. Yes, indeed. <laughs> LaRoche, you have a rodent infestation. <laughs> Hmm. The opening and closing of that door must be controlled by some sort of fingerprint recognition device. I wonder what would happen if... A picture of LaRoche. Hmm. <laughs> Access denied. Hopefully that doesn't set off an alarm or anything. Have a nice day. <laughs> I'll bet if I want to get into that room, I'll have to find a way to get a copy of LaRoche's fingerprint. Indeed. So good My intellectual fox deductive-like reasoning tells me that the opening and closing of that door must be controlled by this fingerprint recognition device. Let me try again. Spy Fox, that's really a bad idea. Uh, uh. 
<laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> That's a nice touch on LaRoche's part. Nope, it's still not working. If I'm going to get in, I'm going to have to get a copy of LaRoche's fingerprint. I, I wonder where we could get those. Surely we don't have to use our last spy gadget. Actually, that's exactly what we have to do. Spy Fox just really casually walks out of the dog bot's foot. The worst part about this mission is my breath still smells like pickle pot pie. It is disgusting. Anyhow, remember the caped cod? We haven't seen him in a while. Well, we actually got him a pair of goggles. So ain't that nice. Come on. I believe these are yours, Kate's card. <laughs> my lucky goggles! I can't believe my eyes! I love how as soon as he goes to the close-up, he no longer has Ugh, stubble. Everything sure smells a lot different with these on. You mean, looks a lot different, don't you? No, smells a lot different. Where'd you find these? Sorry, they've been in my pocket for a while. <laughs> he instantly no longer has, like, the stubble. <laughs> now that he has his goggles. The instant he saw them, it got shaved off, which is just magical. <laughs> He's like, cool, I did it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm the king. That's pretty awesome. Can I borrow your dark goggles, Cape Cod? Heck, son, you can have them. I don't need them anymore. Best not to use them for flying out of a cannon, though. Thanks, that's good to know. <laughs> Who would have thought that that <laughs> would be what we would take away from this? <laughs> so now all the pieces are getting put together, aren't they? Excuse me, Mr. Cod. Don't bother me now. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm basking in my glory. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Put the Cape Cod in Mario Kart. He'd be the fastest character in the game. And has the best acceleration. <laughs> Spy Fox is like, okay. It was kind of cool the first time, but not any different the second time. <laughs> Anyhow. Back to the layer. <laughs> Looking safe and being cool. A spy must always be prepared. Seriously, how do they make goggles that, like, I guess they put, like, sunglass lens on the goggles to make it like that? But the seriously. light is bright, but this spy is brighter. Oh, oh geez, that is one traumatized mom. Also, these poor fly traps that are in here just like, ah, the light it burns! I've seen these Venus fly traps before. This must be some sort of grow room. I wonder what LaRoche is up to. Oh, or that it's like, it's accelerating their growth. Uh, that's also possible. Those fly traps are a lot like the one I got from Flatworld. That's the Kit Cod's brother, Rod. He's less famous. Nobody's gonna... Nobody's gonna see the caped rod. I mean, that would just be kind of plain. That looks just like the perfect place to set this mutant Venus flytrap. Now, can I have the... The Venus flytrap has the off switch in its mouth. <laughs> I've never seen so many flies before in my entire spy life. Those fly traps must really open wide when that jar opens to feed them. Okay, seriously? Uh, so the flies are this big. LaRoche is, well, a cockroach. And yet he's, like, a lot bigger than that. So <laughs> Inconsistent animal size. That's my number one complaint with this game. And honestly, if that's my number one complaint with this game, that's a pretty high-quality game. Good job, Humongous Entertainment. Anyhow, now we gotta get that off switch.
It seems that mutant Venus flytrap prefers to eat flies instead of off switches for giant evil dog bots. Yeah, I I would imagine so. Most people would take fl most people on them. As a human, I would rather put an off switch in my mouth than a fly, probably. I have the off switch. La Roche's evil scheme is crumbling. Woo! Soon my diabolical plan will reach its fiendish fruition. I will be unstoppable. For who or what can possibly stand up to the onslaught of a big giant mechanical dog robot? My sophisticated machine of menace will march across the surface of the earth and claim it in my name. People will shout my name to the skies. Lerot! 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 And I will say, yes, what is it? All the world leaders will sit up and beg for mercy. It's quite an evil plan, no? <laughs> Yeah, as far as villains go, LaRoche versus William the Kid, not really sure which one I like more. I mean, LaRoche is definitely more hammy than William- well, they're both pretty hammy. They're both- they're both fun villains, and I like both of them more than I like the villain in the third game. But, we'll get to that when we get to the third game. Also, holy cow, in the span of like a half hour, we went from having like less than 500 guests in the World's Fair to having like 900,000. This is why you arrive to Disney World at Rope Drop, so that way the lines are a lot shorter than if you go in the afternoon. <laughs> Anyhow, now we need to get into the control room, but we kind of need LaRoche to come over and open it for us. So let's just go over and ask politely, and I'm sure LaRoche will let us through. Clearly that's going to happen. Go right in, Carlton. Oh, gracious me. Oh, my, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh. Excuse me, what's the matter? I don't have a single fork for Mr. LaRoche's dinner, and he gets so surly when he has to wait for his food. Well, you know the old saying, surly to bed and surly to rise. Ah, that's LaRoche's dinner? Yes, spit-roasted boot bernays. Don't tell me. The sauce isn't... Oh, yes, it is. Ugh. I think I'm going to be sick. Now, where are all those forks? <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Um, <laughs> when I was a child, I didn't realize that was, like, an actual boot. I thought that was just a funny name. No, that's an actual boot on a plate, roasted in spit. Yep. Also, nice you got, like, the warming tray with the lights there, keeping it warm. How is it that this restaurant... La Roche is the only diner right now. There is, it's literally just him and it's Oh, we don't have forks! To, what are you going to give the guests? This seems like a major oversight. Major oversight. A fork? My kingdom for a fork! I mean, La Roche isn't that picky. After all, look at what he eats. Does it matter so much what he eats with? But there isn't a single thing here that would even pass for a fork! <laughs> So, LaRoche is having spit-roasted boot bernays for dinner? I hear that is a dish best served cold. Yes, but he won't be served anything until I find a fork. So, that spit-roasted... My spit-roasted boot bernays is so done you would stick a fork in it. If only I could find one. Without a suitable fork, I can't serve Mr. LaRoche's dinner, and he's bound to be pretty ticked off about it. <laughs> Alright, enough of the food puns. Let's go and give her the fork. Here you are. It so happens I carry a fork for just this kind of situation. A fork? I've been looking all over for one. I learned in boot camp it pays to have a fork at all times. I'd better get this spit-roasted boot bernays out to Napoleon the Roach before he starts acting like a heel. It's only a matter of time now before I have LaRoche's prints. 
<laughs> Spit roasted boot bernays, my favorite dish. His boot was made for eating. And that's just what I'll do. Pretty soon that boot is going to be inside of you. There it is. Now I'm almost ready to give La Roche the boot. And I don't mean for dinner. <laughs> so many puns. A little tough, but still good. Uh, even as an adult, that scene cracks me up to no end. <laughs> the expression on the expressions on her face when she leaves, and the yeah, it's just it's gold. It's gold. So many puns all in one place. It's fantastic. Didn't anyone ever tell you that evil doesn't pay? Actually, it doesn't pay well. But... No time to waste. I escape. Anyhow. Now we've got LaRoche's prints, and now we can do this. Let's give this a try, shall we? Welcome! <laughs> oh, so fantastic. Like the old song says, a spoonful of LaRoche's fingerprint helps the steel door go down. Yep. This is the Dogbot's Corner. This looks like a pretty sweet room. Alright. So now we gotta deactivate the Dogbot. So we got the off switch. Blam. There, that should put LaRoche off a bit. Now all I have to do is set the off switch activation code. Now, if I remember correctly, it was Chow, Cherry Apple Orange. That must be where I need to set the off switch activation code. Oh, cherry. Booyah! I remembered it. At last, the off switch is in its place and the activation code is set correctly. How about that for a tourist? Finally, the one million customer has come to the turnstile. The dog bot is now fully operational. Let's hit it! I don't think this is a good sign. So this music is I hope Lo Roach has earthquake insurance. Whoa! It has an laser eyes! Must get to, to, to the off switch! Bad dog bot. Sit! <laughs> so many good thumbnails. What? Spy box. You called? La Roche, your evil days are over. I don't think so. The sun has not yet set. Going after Always buckle up. <laughs> you almost caught that Napoleon LaRoche, Spy Fox. Once again, you've gone above and beyond the call of duty. Thank you, Chief. I present to you the Economy Size Award of Eternal Excellence. Thanks, Chief. It was all in the line of duty. So that's the, uh, the bad ending, quote-unquote, if you let LaRoche get away. We still get an award, it's just a smallish one. <laughs> and I like how you never see the Chief's face, it's great. 
for the deductive reasoning and daring deeds displayed in disabling the dangerous and destructive evil dogbot and for saving the world's fair from total devastation, I hereby award this certificate of accomplishment. Signed by the Spy Corps chief and stamped with the Spy Corps stamp of approval. Well, sweet. Yeah, you can print it out and then sign your name there. That's pretty cool. All right. So, I was originally planning on showing off the good ending too, but I think I'll actually wait to show off the good ending until my next playthrough, because there's still the second path that I'm going to do with Marty. I think it would be more appropriate to wait to catch LaRoche until then, so look forward to that in the future. Oh, that's a character we haven't seen yet. <laughs> we'll be seeing them on the other path. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Colorful Artie. Tune in next time. Uh, Marty's going to be joining me, and we're going to start the second path, which is going to be a whole lot of fun. Look forward to that, and until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. Bye -bye.